Thank you so much to Derivative and all of our Patreons for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications to help us share this knowledge. For downloadable files and visuals, check out our Patreon or Gumroad. All links will be in the description. In this one, we're going to introduce three custom components we can use to transform all visuals into audio reactive visuals. To illustrate all three components, I'll use one of my old files and like this you'll see how easy it is to implement this into your existing visuals. But if you want to use the exact same visuals as I'm doing here, you will find a tutorial on this earlier on our YouTube channel. You can go recreate it and then come back here to keep going. Okay. So so first, to make anything audio reactive, we need some audio. So you can either use the Touch Designer default audio or insert some other audio you like. I'll insert a track I downloaded from Epidemic Music. To output the music, I'll connect an audio device out right after the track. Here I'll copy paste the audio device out. You don't need to do this, but just so that you've heard of it once, I have a complex audio setup in my computer which allows me to record my voice as well as the music at the same time in different channels. This helps me later on with the video editing, in case the music is too loud or my voice is too low, then I can easily manipulate this. Okay, the first audio I will route through black hole and the second audio I will route to my sound card. Great, now that we have the music and the audio device out, we need to make sure that the timeline matches the track. The usual way we would do this is we would manually create an info chop after the audio chop and we would analyze the length of the audio and manually reset the length of the timeline. To automatize this process, we have created this custom tox called Setup Audio Reactive Song. This will be available to download for free in our Gumroad or our Patreon. Links down below. Now this is really straightforward. If you open the parameter window, you will see there are only two parameters. The song chop and the setup. So what we'll do is drag and drop our audio chop we inserted in the beginning and then pause on setup. As soon as we do this, two timeline settings will get automatically updated to the length of the track. So we see that the overall end frame value and the sub-range end frame value are no longer 600, but they have this other value which corresponds to the length of the sound we input in the beginning. Another thing that this component does is it sets the play mode of the audio chop to set to timeline. This will save us a bunch of clicks that might not be bothersome once in a while, but if doing audio reactive visuals is your goal, then this will facilitate the process. One thing you have to remember here is if for any reason you want to switch to another track instead of the one you inserted in the beginning, then you'll need to drag and drop the new audio and you'll also have to pause again. Then let's attach an all right after the audio chop. For the same reason here, in case I want to switch the track later, I don't want to have to connect the new track to all the other nodes I'll attach after. Ok, now that we have the basic setup, we'll move on to the actual audio reactive components we use. We'll introduce here two different toxics, the audio reactive rotation and the audio reactive value. Let's first see the audio reactive rotation. I haven't come up with a more suitable name for this comp. I think rotation doesn't really fit, but I'll explain what it does and maybe you guys can give me an idea in the comments about how I should rename it. First, let's attach an old chop right after. Now, the audio reactive rotation is outputting a value which is constantly growing over time. So here we might already start thinking which parameters is this more suitable for. So for example, it makes sense that we use this on a rotation parameter. Seeing how the value is always increasing, it will always keep the object moving. Where it doesn't make any sense to use, it would be, for example, on a scale parameter. Seeing how the size would increase so fast that the object will very soon go out of view of the camera. So let's use it on an example. Let's open the parameter window of this noise shop and we see in the transform tab here there's the translate Z parameter which is already being animated with a time. Put the null after the audio reactive component view reactive and then we'll drag and drop it to the translate Z of the noise. This will be too fast in the beginning, but we can decrease it if we multiply the whole expression by 0.01. Then we can copy this same expression and paste it onto another parameter of some other node. So I'll paste it on the translate Z parameter of this next noise SOP and instead multiply it by 0.03. So there we have it, the visuals are already reacting to the speed of the input track. 
This is already very powerful. You can use this everywhere on every parameter which can be animated with a time. So on every parameter that you would normally type appsTime.seconds, there you can also use these talks. These talks will also be available for free download on our Gumroad and on our Patreon. Just follow the link in the description. I'm really excited to see how you use it. Now on to the next talks, the audio reactive value. We said before that the audio reactive rotation only makes sense to use in the cases where the value can go all the way to infinity, whereas these new talks can be used in all the cases where we need a parameter to stay in between a certain range. This is one difference and another difference here is there are two outputs to these talks. We'll connect a null to each of them. We notice that these nulls are outputting different values. The bottom one is outputting raw data from the track, whereas the top one is outputting clamped values. Now here let's open the parameter window and here we notice that there are several parameters, starting with a gain, which is a multiplier. Decreasing this value will also decrease the output values of both nodes. There are some other parameters in between, but I'd say that the most important one for now is this two range. These parameters will serve as boundaries for the value. So we can analyze any parameter we want to animate and see, for example, okay, this looks nice until it surpasses a certain value, then it doesn't look good anymore. So then I will keep this value in mind, either as an upper or a lower boundary and set it to the two range. So let's see this on a concrete example. Let's see how this would work in the case of the noise top period. I want the value of it to go from 0.5 to 1.8. So then I'll just open the parameter window of the audio reactive value and I will set the two range 0.5 to 1.8. Then we'll just make the top null viewer active and then drag and drop it to the period. It's important that we only drag and drop the top null because the bottom one is only taking the raw data and calibrating it. Okay, so now you see the power of these two toxics, how you can pimp your already existing files, change up a few parameters and easily turn them into audio reactive visuals. The second talks will only be available for purchase on our Gumroad or on our Patreon. I'm very excited to see your audio reactive renders. Please tag us on Instagram or here on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something valuable. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I'll leave you with a few renders to get some inspiration and I'll see you very soon with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!